August 29, 2017, the latest Cayenne makes its international debut on the roof of the Porsche Museum. This is the third generation of the sporty off-road vehicle known in-house as the E3. Dr. Wolfgang Porsche, the entire managing board and the team responsible for creating the Cayenne are meeting the world press. The SUVs are successful everywhere in the world, whether you look at China, at Europe or at North America. And that makes SUVs attractive for manufacturers too, because for them it means large sales volumes. In 2019, Porsche sells more than 90,000 units worldwide. The one millionth Cayenne is built in the autumn of 2020. For almost two decades, the characteristic performance of a Porsche combined with the impressive off-road handling and high everyday usability have aroused a strong sense of desire. In the early 1990s, Porsche's very existence was in jeopardy. 1992 was the worst year in company history. Only 15,000 cars were built, so it concentrated all its efforts on the 911 and the Boxster. The strategy of using the same parts for the Boxster and the 911. The Boxster was launched in 1996 and the 996 generation of the 911 in 1997 restored success to Zuffenhausen. And still riding this wave, the company started thinking about a third product line for Porsche. They were looking for a sporty, all-terrain, multi-purpose vehicle. In a project named Colorado, they came up with what later came to be known as as the Cayenne. Over one million Cayennes have been delivered, a milestone. It all started some 20 years ago when the E1 was designed. Even in the freezing cold, like here in Canada, Porsche is breaking new ground with its SUV series. They thought about it for a long time and did some surveys to see whether customers could imagine a sport utility Porsche. They were very cautious saying that it would have to be a sporty SUV too. And I think that's very important. It's in our DNA. For Porsche, as a sports car manufacturer, growth meant that we also had to look into building vehicles that were not in the two-seater category. Because finding a dealer in Asia, in China, who is willing to invest money in order to sell Porsche sports cars was unthinkable then and still would be today. In Asia, you drive a four-seater, and if you have lots of money and can afford lots of hobbies, you can buy a two-seater to go with it, but not the other way round. That's why we came up with the Cayenne. The Cayenne was the category of vehicle that offered us the greatest potential, and it worked. The Cayenne was developed in cooperation with Volkswagen under Porsche's leadership that allowed risks to be reduced while at the same time pursuing the goal of launching a distinctive model, different from Volkswagen's models and with its own generation of engines. Work initially started at the development center in Weissach, of course. But Weissach didn't have the necessary capacity, so they looked for and found a suitable location in Hemmingen, halfway between Zuffenhausen and Weissach. They rented 3,800 square meters and started a small secret project there. Once you had found the gates and passed through them, it was like a think tank for this third product line. 2010, test driving the E2 in the desert. By then, the Cayenne is already Porsche's best seller. The Cayenne has on-road and off-road capabilities, but being able to move around in it like this in dunes, on sand, that was a completely new experience, for me too, something you have to experience for yourself. You drive into the sand, lower the air pressure down to one bar, and then go surfing through the dunes, using just one hand. It's incredibly fun, a real pleasure. The car's capabilities in this respect are tremendous. Afterwards, you drive out of the dunes, pump up the tires, and start driving on the road again. It's just fascinating. 
For Porsche, in particular, the success of this model comes from combining sportiness with the genes of the SUV. All the things we have implemented in the Macan or Cayenne are features that we have already tested in motorsports or in our two-door sports cars. And it is precisely this combination that makes the Porsche's SUVs so successful. Early summer 2017, the caravan of developers working on the E3 is traveling across Spain in the heat. With the E3, it took almost three years, during which we repeatedly carried out so-called complete vehicle tests in different climate zones. We went to cold regions a number of times, we visited different warm regions, and we also did a dune test. The Cayenne sets the bar very high. It must remain fully functional even after a mud fight or after driving through deep snow. It needs to offer a certain degree of comfort when driving off-road, and the vehicle must give you a sense of being very safe. An SUV simply needs to be able to do that. And an SUV made by Porsche has to be better at everything. Details that have been tested worldwide under a wide range of extreme conditions are fine-tuned here on the in-house test track in Weissach until the car is ready for series production. The success story of the Cayenne continues unabated, thanks in part to the clever strategy of building derivatives. The Cayenne Coupe, on the market since 2019, is very popular. Around a quarter of all Cayenne customers worldwide opt for this even sportier version. The idea behind the Cayenne Coupe was the question, how can we visually convey an even higher level of sportiness? And it was clear that this is simply a matter of the fly line. Hans-Jürgen Brohler is referring to the steeply sloping roofline of the Cayenne Coupe, a nod to the design of the 911. The optional retro-style sports seats are a real eye-catcher. The concept is entirely coherent. The car drives differently. The differences are clearly noticeable, and it looks different too. Porsche begins electrifying the SUV back in 2010, thereby becoming a pioneer within the segment. We were concerned about the high fuel consumption of SUVs. First, we introduced direct fuel injection, which led to greater efficiency. And then, in the next generation, we introduced lightweight construction and hybridization. These were very clear steps, implementing the must-haves. We were the first to produce a hybrid. Now we have updated it in the form of plug-in hybrids. That was a very important step, which has also led to a higher acceptance in the way SUVs are perceived. Powerful and efficient. Key attributes of the plug-in hybrid models of the Cayenne. In 2007, the Cayenne is the pioneer within the Porsche universe with the first modern-day GTS model, entirely optimized for sports and a success right from the start. That was an incentive for everyone, of course, also for the Boxster colleagues, for the 911 colleagues. They didn't have a GTS. The Cayenne was the first model to bring back the GTS theme from the company's history. It was a great success. We rolled it out and we are very happy with it today. The one millionth was a GTS. How did we get here? by continuously enhancing the product, by developing it with our customers in mind, also by coming up with suitable derivatives that appealed to customers, and by taking the right steps in terms of the technology. All this contributed to the developments we have seen in the number of units built. Without this, it couldn't have happened, because our growth was disproportionately high compared with the SUV segment as a whole. The Cayenne has cracked the one million mark. No other SUV achieves this perfect balance between the characteristic performance of a Porsche, impressive off-road handling, and everyday suitability.
but Porsche has never been one to rest on its laurels. The story of the Cayenne will continue with many new exciting chapters. Subscribe to Auto TV.